you're working on something that has firearms or even a 3D scene that you don't want to bog down with a simulation. I'm going to show you the method I use to make this effect in Blender. Let's do it. Before we jump into the effect itself, it's a good idea just to bear in mind reference. Pistols and rifles generally have the same shape of flash, but rifles sometimes have muzzle brakes, which shoot some of the expanding gases out of ports on the sides and make the flames jump out like this. When I looked up reference of how this particular firearm, the German MP40, looked when fired, it's underwhelming to say the least. But often, when depicted in film, the flashes are larger and more pronounced, so you kind of have to find the middle ground between what is realistic and what people expect. With that out of the way, let's jump into Blender. I just set up this scene to showcase the effect I'm going to be making. Let's go ahead and isolate these selections to make it easier to work with. By the way, the model of the MP40 is free on Sketchfab, and the soldier model is free on Mixamo.com. You can obtain them from the links in the description below. As you can see, I'm using a point light to simulate the lighting of the muzzle flash on the character. You can start by adding in a sphere or an icosphere. Either can work. If you go into editing mode, you can use the proportional editing tool to move the vertices on the front of the muzzle flash outward gradually into the general shape of a flash of fire jumping out of the barrel. At this point, go into the modifier tab on the muzzle flash and add in a displacement modifier. This is going to simulate the branches of flame. At first, it looks as if, well, nothing good is happening. Go into the textures tab and make a new one by clicking the new button. From the type drop down, pick one of the options. I find that Vernoy and clouds work the best, but feel free to experiment because there's no one look you have to achieve. Then go add another modifier, this time a subdivision surface. Move it up to the top to give the displacement modifier more vertices to work with. You can also go into edit mode, right click, and subdivide to get even more, and to help it hold its shape. At this point, it will probably look something like this, so we need to mess with the size of it. If you adjust the texture size and turn it down, the displacements will be smaller and vice versa. I like to set mine at a pretty low value. But this is just the size of the displacement and not the effect it will have on the mesh, so we can diminish that in the modifier tab by turning down the strength. You can also turn up and or duplicate your subdivision for a bit more definition. Now that the main mesh is done, we can move on to texturing. Move into the shading workspace at the top of Blender. If you don't see it, you can always add a new one by hitting the plus button. If we make a new material and go into the rendered mode, we can see that it looks, well, yeah, I have no idea what it looks like actually. We can go ahead and delete the principled shader because we won't be needing that. Now, a simple way to do this is just to add in an emission node and plug it into the surface input, turn up the brightness and change the hue a little bit, but it looks flat. And if we look at even stock effects, they are shaded. The middle and toward the barrel are the brightest because that's where most of the flash is and it fades out towards the edges. What we can do to immediately improve this effect is to just plug the emission into the volume input. It starts the shade effect like it's supposed to. Just give it a little more definition. Add in a color ramp node. You can drag and drop the emissions color into the color ramp node, then add in a noise texture and plug it into a mix RGB node. If we shift and left click on a node, we can see what it is doing. Another color ramp will increase the contrast of the noise texture. It doesn't currently work in Eevee at this stage, but the next step will work in either render engine, and I might even like the one in Eevee better. Hide everything but the muzzle flash in your scene and render it out at a fairly high sample rate. Make sure to save it without the alpha channel because when re-importing it, Blender doesn't take it well. Then re-import it to Blender as an image plane. Make sure to select Emit in the Material Settings. You can manually place the flash in your scene, or if you scroll down to the Alpha section in the Material Settings and change the vector to Window, it will stay where it was when you rendered it, no matter how you move or scale. But losing the ability to scale it if you wanted to makes it hard to look at other angles if the muzzle flash is moving around constantly. So I manually place mine. To make sure the background gets keyed out, go to the shading tab and make sure to plug the color channel into the alpha input. You can also add in a color ramp to fine tune it. Then boost the emission strength. Might be just me, but I, I just love real time glow. It just looks so sick. Then add in a hue, saturation, and value node in between the color and emission inputs. Give it some saturation and adjust the hue to whatever you like. Holding down shift while changing values will move it in smaller increments and help you not change too much at once. Also, you might notice the flash making a weird effect as it intersects with the point light. 
That's because the shadow mode is on. Make sure to go to the material properties and under the settings tab, change the shadow mode to none. And that's pretty much the effect. Anyway guys, that was how to make muzzle flashes in Blender. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below. If you subscribe, that really helps me out and you get to see more videos like this.